weaknesses. So here, you know how the hellfire will be. It will have the complete darknesses. It is surrounded with so much darkness. So how the scenario will be. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the Quran and also we have seen different hadith also. How the darknesses of the hell will be. So here Abu Huraira radiallahu anh, who narrated that Prophet sallallahu said the hellfire will be like you know how the darknesses of the hellfire will be. Here is, Allah is saying you know the darknesses of the hellfire is uh, like Prophet sallallahu is said hell is heated up for thousand years until it turns white then it is heated further thousand years until it turns red and again a thousand years until it turns black this blackness is like a dark night in another hadith reported by Behaqi Prophet ﷺ compare the blackness of hellfire to the tar and the fumes of the hell being 70 times more intense than the worldly fumes so Ibn Abi Dunya and Tabrani reported a narration explaining that the kindling and the embers in hell do not give off light. Of uh, light, you know, Obey Ibn Kaab radiallahu said, Allah subhanahu wa taala gives an example of disbelievers in the Quran with this verse: "Aw kasay, aw kazulumatin fi." Yajri Lujji Yagshahu Maujum Min Fawkihi Maujum Min Fawkihi Sahabun Zulumatum Baduha Fawkha Badin Iza Akhraja Yadahu Lam Yaka Yakad Yaraha Wamal Lam Yaj Alilahu Lahu Nurum Fama Lahu Min Nur So this is mentioned like or they are like darknesses within an unfathomable sea which is covered by waves upon which are waves over which are clouds darknesses some of them upon other when uh, one puts uh, out his hand there him he can hardly see it and he to whom Allah has not granted light for him there is no light so it is so dark so the disbelievers is faced with five levels of darknesses, zulumat. His speech and deeds are darknesses and they shall enter darknesses and leave to enter another darkness and his journey is towards darknesses of hellfire. Rabbi Ibn Anas radiallahu said, Verily Allah has made this worldly fire a source of light and radiance. It is also a source of energy for the people of the world. But the great fire of the hell is dark like a tar. May Allah protect us from it, you know. Allahumma jirni minanar. ad said, hell is black. Its water is black. Its trees are black and its dwellers are black. So a hadith reveals that the sinner among the believers will be burnt in the hellfire until they turn into black coal. Substantiates the fact that the hell dwellers are black. And the next chapter, you know, hell's intense heat and bitter coal. Chapter number 10. Allah the Most High said, وَقَوَالُوا لَا تَنْفِرُوا فِي الْحَرِّ قُلْ نَارُ جَهَنَّمَ أَشَدُّ حَرِّ and they said, do not go forth in the heat. Say, the fire of hell is more intense in heat if they would but understand. So it is reported in both Bukhari and Muslim on the authority of Abu Huraira radiallahu who narrated that Prophet said, hell pleaded to her Lord saying, O oh Lord, some parts of me are eating other parts from severe heat so allow me respite in the form of exhalation once in winter once again in summer so hellfire is asking to inhale once in winter and once in summer so the most severe of heat you experience it from its swarm 
and the worst of chill is from its zamharir once in winter and once in summer so another hadith reported in both bukhari and muslim on the authority of abu huraira radhiyallahu anhu where prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the fire that the son of adam ignites in one of the 70 parts intense than hell fire his companion remarked by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one part would have been sufficient allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said hell fire is 69 times hotter each part equally hot which was explained by prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam imam ahmad reports a narration with the addition where it's not that hell fire was dipped in the sea twice the worldly fire would have proved to intense for any use kaab said to umar al qattab radhiyallahu anhu if a hole the size of the bull's nostril were to open in the east of the hell a man on the west would have had his brain boiling due to its heat and follow like a liquid as a result that's the comparison you know even like a small hole like a bull's nostril like the brain will be boiling it because of that so abdul al malik ibn umair said if the dwellers of hell were to stay in a fire of intensity of this world they would fall asleep therein another hadith states that the hell fire says on a daily basis my heat has increased my depth has deepened my embers have become great and my lord has postponed my dwellers from me bashir ibn mansur as atal as-salami how would one feel if the worldly fire is ignited and he is as who shall enter it ata replied if i were asked that question i will be so elated that i fear my soul will leave my body body before i fall into the fire the, this was the chapter so next chapter will be the section one which is like you know freezing coldness some harira of hell fire that we gonna cover in upcoming class we will be doing till here now the kitab at tawhid the chapter the saying this wealth is the result of my labor and the knowledge is against tawhid so the reference of this ayah wala in azqnahu rahmatan minna min badi darra massathu layqulan hadha li وما أظن الساعة قائمة ولا إن رجعت إلى ربي إن لي إنده للحسن ولا ننز ننبي أن الذين كفروا بما أملوا ولا نزيقنهم من أذاب غليظ and truly if we give him a taste of mercy from us after some adversity severe poverty or disease has touched him he is sure to say this is due to my merit i think not that the hour will be established but if i am brought back to my lord surely there be for my best wealth with him then we verily will show to the disbelievers what they have done and we shall make them test a severe torment this is in surah number 41 ayah number 50 so it is mentioned wala in azqna rahma like when truly allah make them taste the rahma mercy from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but after adversity mim badi darra masathu darra could be you know it could be severe poverty or disease has touched him he surely say so the person is saying la yaqulanna noon e taqid and lam e taqid is there to emphasize hazali the person is saying oh this is because of me this is due to my merit it's not like you know whatever the good happens we should say to ourselves no never it is because the rahma of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but the person is being boastful here the person is saying oh this is due to my merit and not only that the person is saying wama azunnu sa'a azunnu is from zan guman think 
speculate. And the person is thinking, I think not that the hour will be established. He is not believing in the hour, the day of judgment. And, but if I am brought back to my Lord, surely there will be for me the best wealth. Not only the person is thinking, if I am ever going to brought back, in the husna, the person is thinking, that time also I am going to have best wealth with me. Then it is mentioned here, then we really show to the disbelievers what they have done. Why it is mentioned disbelievers here? Kafaru. Because Bima Ami Lu Wala Nuzi Kwanahum bin Azabin Khalis. Because what they have done, we shall make them taste a severe torment. Because here they are not being thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are not believing in oneness of Allah and they are like assigning whatever the good happens, they are telling to themselves. We can't say that. It is the Rahma, it's the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So because of that, Allah is saying, Wala nuzi kannahum. In the starting of the ayah also, Wala in azaknahum from Zoh. The same word, the formation has been changed. Again, it has been used. You have to taste azab bin Qalis, severe torment. In the starting, Allah said, I make you taste the mercy of Allah. Like something happens. Allah removes with his mercy. But person is assigning to themselves. That is also kufr. And then here it is mentioned, Mujahid said, the Arabic words, Hazali means this is the result of my labor and I do deserve it. Ibn Abbas radiallahu said that it means what is it with me is due to the virtue of myself. And the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Surah number 28, Ayah number 78, so this was the Karun who said this has been given to me only because of my knowledge I possess. Katada Radiallahu said in the explanation of this ayah, this wealth was given to me because of my merit and experience in earning. You understand? Like whatever the Allah has given whether it's wealth or mal, it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But this Karun, he is being not thankful. He is assigning to himself. Other scholars say it's because of knowledge from Allah that I particularly deserve for this. Allah gives everything and we are giving back to Allah. So we are no one to say, I deserve this, I did this, ana ana. And this is the meaning of Mujahid's statement. This was bestowed on me because of my high rank. Some people, they think, oh, this is of me because I did so and so. So I, I deserve this. this was, there was a longer hadith which narrated by Abu Huraira who narrated that he heard Allah's Messenger وسلم, saying, Inna uh, So here it is uh, mentioned a longer hadith where uh, three Israelites, uh, Israelis were tested. Allah will to test three Israelis who were one was a leper, one was a blind person and one was a bald headed person. So he sent them an angel who came first to the leper and said, what thing do you like most? The angel is asking to the person who is leper. He replied, good color and good skin for the people have a strong aversion to me. The angel touched him and his illness was cured and he was given a good color and a beautiful skin. The angel asked him, what kind of property do you like best? He replied, camels or cows. Ishaq, the narrator, is confused so he uh, i.e. the leper was given a pregnant she camel, Allah knows best. And the angel said to him, may Allah bless you in it. The angel then went to the bald-headed man and said, what thing do you like most? He said, I like good hair and wish to be cured. 
of uh, this disease for the people feel repulsion for me the angel touched him and his illness was cured he was given good uh, hair the angels asked him what kind of property do you like the best he replied cows or camels the angel gave him pregnant cow and said may allah bless you in it the angel went to the blind person and asked what thing do you like best he said i like that allah may restore my eyesight to me so that i may see the people the angel touched his eyes and kind of property do you like the best he replied sheep so he gave him a pregnant sheep afterwards all three pregnant animals gave birth to young ones and multiplied and brought forth so much that one of the three men had a herd of camels filling a valley and one had a herd of cows filling a valley and one had a flock of sheep filling a valley then the angel disguised in the shape and appearance of a leper you remember that same angel he came back first to the leper went to the leper and said now angel is saying this i'm a poor person who has lost all means of livelihood while on a journey so none will satisfy my need except allah then you in the name of him who has given you such a nice color and beautiful skin now the same angel he is asking this is yani like a test he is saying you know you have such a good color beautiful skin so much property i ask you to give me a camel so he is asking you know can you give me a camel so that i may reach my destination the man replied i have many obligation so i cannot give you the angel said i think i know you be you not a leper now the angel is saying that you no know, you remember you were a leper to whom the people had a strong aversion towards you weren't you a poor man and then allah gave you all this property he replied oh this is all wrong he is denied i got this property through inheritance from my forefathers so the angel said if you are telling a lie let allah make you as you were before so the angel said if you are lying you going to be the same as you were before then the angel disguised in the shape and appearance of a bald man now he went to the bald person this this is the first case you know so he came to the uh, how he was you remember he was a leper then he went to the person who was a ba- bald person went to the bald man and said to him the same as he said to the first person and he to answer the same as the first person did he asked for the you know a camel to go from this place to that place and then the angel said if you are telling a lie then let allah make you as you were before because you know he asked for the favor he didn't give and he uh, you know make him remember like how he was before and you know allah gave this and he said no this was because of him he got the it from the inheritance and so on and so forth he lied so the angel said if you were doing this lying like uh, went to the blind uh, like you how you were before you going to be the same then the angel disguised in the shape of a blind man went to the blind man and said now the finally to the blind person you remember three people were there and now i'm a poor person who is saying this angel is saying i'm a poor person and uh, a traveler whose means of livelihood has been exhausted so uh, assalam alaikum so i got your wave uh so a poor person traveler whose means of livelihood has been exhausted so what happened this is the final one the third one while on a journey i have nobody to help me who is asking this this is angel who is asking this third person and after him you yourself i ask you in the name of him who has given you back your eyesight to give me a sheep you remember the previous one the to those two he asked for the camel and a sheep they they replied no they don't have anything to give and they came to the former uh, like how they were uh, they like uh, the person was a leper the person was a bal person and this the blind person uh, so he's asking the help who the angel so 
with its help i may complete my journey this angel is saying so that i can complete my journey the man said no doubt i was blind allah gave me back my eyesight who is saying this the blind person he said i was blind and allah gave me the eyesight i was a poor and allah made me rich so take anything you wish from my property by allah i will not stop you for taking anything you need of my property which you may take for allah's sake the angel replied keep your property with you so remember those two people who were bald and the leper they denied they lied they said this is because of us and uh, we got it from the inheritance and they were not thankful but this person who was a blind person he was thankful he said yes this is the thing i got it from allah you may take whatever you want so whatever we have right now it is from allah it doesn't mean like you know whatever the thing you are trying you should stop doing that no i don't mean that you should try hard because allah said try the camel but whatever we are getting the worldly things and even the deen and islam it's because of the mercy of allah subhanahu wa taala no matter how many good deeds we have without the mercy and rahma of allah subhanahu wa taala we can't enter into jannah so we need the mercy and rahma of allah so but what we learn from this blind person he replied that i am thankful to allah you can have it the angel replied keep your property with you you have been tested and allah is pleased with you and angry with those two companions this is in bukhari so we are learning kitab ut tauhid so what are the important lessons we learned from today's chapter the explanation of the aya surah al fussilat aya number 50 surah number 41 the meaning of la yaqulanna haza li he showed to say this is for me due to my merit who said that karun we can't say oh because of me i got it and this thing no the meaning of inna ma utitu hu ala ilmin indi Surah number twenty-eight, ayah number seventy-eight. This has been given to me only because of knowledge I possess. Never. We should never say that. It is because of Allah had mercy on you. The great lessons hidden in the wonderful story quoted. So the inshallah in upcoming class we go to do chapter number fifty, which every name which leads to the service of other than Allah is prohibited. Yani. whatever the names are small husna the only 99 names which are authentic other than that we are not supposed to take any name and uh, assign to allah subhanahu wa taala so today's chapter was you know we learn like whatever allah has given we should be thankful to allah subhanahu wa taala and allah will give you more in shakar tum la azidannakum if you are thankful allah will give you more and never assign anything what you have given saying that oh because of this you know because of me because of myself because haza li is forbidden because of me no because of the mercy of allah subhanahu wa taala one should try hard one should give your 100% like you you are attempting some exam you you try harder and with the mercy of allah subhanahu wa taala you get through right it could be anything in your life but always have a positive attitude and always be thankful to allah subhanahu wa taala and also be thankful to the people a person is who is thankful to allah they are thankful to the people also so we'll keep our lesson for today till here and inshallah we'll do it uh, in upcoming week subhanakallahumma bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nasta